If you are coding in Go, you have probably asked yourself, what Go framework should I use? Now, I want to be specific here and focus on frameworks that people would typically use when they're building a Go backend for their API and not so much frameworks they would use for creating something like a CLI, which if you haven't heard already, Cobra and Charm are great options, so go use them. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to do one quick Google search on what Go framework to use. You see a whole bunch of lists pop up and then you get yourself into what I like to call the JavaScript problem. The JavaScript problem is when there's too many options of what tool, library, framework to use without actually knowing which one you truly need and want for your applications. In JavaScript, there's React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, Astro, Next. I mean, it's JavaScript. The ecosystem is evolving and changing every single day. But in Go, I mean, there's also a lot of options. There's Jin, there's Chi, there's Fiber, there's Echo, there's Vulpix. That's a Pokemon. I try to trick you. I wanna be the very best. Which framework is right for them? Well, that's the actual thing. There is no right framework in Go. So you can see here, I'm on Go Chi. And if I just read the first bit of the readme, Chi is a lightweight, idiomatic, and composable router for building Go HTTP services. If I flip to Go Jin, Jin is a web framework written in Go. It features a Martini Lake API with performance that is up to 40 times faster thanks to HTTP router. If you check out Go Fiber, Fiber is an express inspired web framework built on top of fast HTTP, the fastest HTTP engine for Go. And if we check Go Echo, we can see some of the featured overviews optimized HTTP router with smartly prioritized routes, build robust and scalable RESTful APIs. Have you noticed a pattern? You see a lot of these libraries in Go, these frameworks are essentially doing the same thing. They are just wrappers on top of the standard library that Go offers. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I'm not saying all of these are the exact same, but when you are focusing on just creating routes or middleware or anything like that, you can pick any of them. Here, we're back on Go Chi, and you can see this example as easy as you have your imports. So there's Chi, there's a standard HTTP library, and there in your function main, you create your new router using the Chi library, you create some middleware, and you're designing a route here. So this get route with a response that just says welcome. Looks super simple. Wow, Chi is great. All right, let's flip on to Jin for a second. Jin, you have your imports, net, HTTP, and Jin. Okay, awesome. So you create gin.default and oh, oh you, you define your route that has a response. Okay, cool. This is great. This is awesome. How about we check out fiber for a second? You have your import fiber and oh, oh app fiber.new and you define, uh, this looks almost exactly the same. You have your get route that just says hello world. Okay, well, how about we check out echo for real quickly? Just, you know, just to check it out. How different can it be? And oh, you, you create your new echo instance. Oh, okay middleware or all right and you you get route with a response that says hello world you can see that all of them follow the same pattern and yes jin and chi may have things that provide more use case and a fully fleshed out library and framework to use but at the end of the day, you create the instance, you define your get or post route, and you pass it a function or literally a JSON payload, and it just does what you tell it to. The handler respond to the route how you define it, and it looks the exact same way for every single one. And just to showcase another example, one that I personally recommend is HTTP Router by Julian Schmidt, because this is the closest to the standard library that you can get between all the examples I previously showed. You can see here, you define two handlers, index and hello. You define your routes by instantiating HTTP router from the library that you pull in. And then you have a two dot get methods on these two routes declared, and they will pass the function of the handler. And so what I really want to kind of convey and what I always talk about when I explain Go to someone is that you have to separate your thinking of Go from JavaScript if you're coming from that world or any other world, because Go, you can truly do everything with the standard library. Go isn't that programming language where you should be picky and really pulling resources or deciding which framework is right for you. Of course, there's gonna be particular use cases that you can read about and really discover that, huh, this really solved the problem I have, I'm gonna use, and that's 
perfectly fine. But if you're spending time spinning your wheels on deciding from all the frameworks that you see from a best framework to use in 2023 list, you're wasting your time. What I recommend to everyone who's starting with Go is essentially try to do things using just the standard library. Don't start importing modules or frameworks if you don't need them. They're all the same. But why am I recommending HTTP router? Melky, didn't you just say try to make it yourself? And that's a valid point. But like I said earlier, HTTP router is the closest one to the standard library. And that is why I personally like it. You don't need to bring anything new. It's simply just a router that gives you everything you need to fully pass in any handler you decide to create. And there's other libraries and frameworks they can use in Go. The Go ecosystem is rich. It's people always developing new things to use. If you want to use something for sending emails or specifically handling, you know, crypto hashes or JWT tokens or anything like that, there's something there for you. But Use a standard library, explore the standard library first. You'll be surprised on how well and defined those things come stock in the Go ecosystem. So with that, guys, I gotta leave you with two things. Out of all of the frameworks I just decided and listed, which one have you used for your Go application? And if you've used one, I challenge you to use the standard library. Remove that framework from your app and just try replicating it with the standard library. And let me know if you're su successful or not. And two, you gotta power it.